And once the rope is very tight, then the signal is given, and then the glider will accelerate from stationary to 60 to 70 knots in about one to two seconds. Hello, um, my name's Mike Strathern. Uh, I'm a glider pilot and I fly at Lake Station Gliding Club in the top of the South Island in New Zealand. Uh, I've been flying since I was the age of 14 and I started when I was at school. Since then, I've uh, progressed and become an instructor. I've got a PPL and I'm a tow pilot. I drive the winch, which launches the gliders, and I'm also an engineer. And I've recently just returned from Australia representing New Zealand in the World Gliding Championships. Having a good situational awareness as a glider pilot of what a parapilot is doing and as a parapilot of what a glider pilot is doing is really important. A standard glider circuit uh, usually starts somewhere between 800 and 1000 feet at the upwind end of the airfield after we've either returned from a cross-country flight or we've finished our training. And we will start on our downwind leg uh, flying at about 50, 55 knots at about 900 feet. Uh, we will progress downwind um, maintaining a suitable height and depending on the wind if it's very calm we can move away from the airfield and if it's quite windy we will stay quite close to the airfield but we're descending all the way around the circuit At approximately 500 feet we aim to be turning base leg then we will perform a, a base leg and we will join finals at approximately 300 feet most of the time uh, gliders do perform a reasonably standard circuit and it's the 900, 500 foot, 300 foot circuit. But sometimes we do get caught out with wind, wave, sea breeze coming in and things like that. So um, we have to sometimes uh, adjust our circuits because the whole thing's a very dynamic atmosphere. Uh, we could be coming downwind and we're only a thousand feet above the ground and if we run into 500 feet a minute uh, rate of descent uh, we've got uh, a minute or so before we can land so we might be going halfway downwind sinking at 500 feet a minute and we might have to turn base leg halfway down the airfield um, when we're getting low quite often we'll actually creep towards the airfield as well because um, we need to maintain so that we can do that final turn at 300 feet and likewise sometimes we have good air um, so we can move out um, and we can extend a little bit downwind or we can use our air brakes to keep us within the sort of zone um, but you need to be cautious when you're flying in a mounting site or a site that there's a bit of wind that the glider may do a bit of a non-standard circuit and the other option is when we're coming back sometimes we may not be able to get over onto the AIP published circuit of the airfield we may have to do a non-standard circuit on the other side rather than cross over get low and perform a very low low turn if the wind is very strong, say 10, 15, 20, 25 knots, which is what we like to fly in as glider pilots, um, we might have to turn our, our circuit would be closer and we wouldn't extend the circuit much beyond the boundary fence. Um, very often I've turned a uh, base leg at eight or 900 feet and a final turn at seven or 800 feet right over the fence um, because the descent when we open the air brakes um, is very rapid. Most gliders fly the circuit somewhere between 50 and 60 knots and we're descending on average at about 200 feet a minute. Your average Cessna would be flying at about 90 knots so there's a very real problem of overtaking in the circuit. The best thing to do when you're joining a circuit with another glider is to stay outside of the glider and give it a bit of space because the glider is, has to land. And if you just fly outside us, you'll be able to see us, extend downwind and then follow us in when we land. Once you've landed in your powered aircraft, it's really important that you clear the runway as soon as possible because the glider behind you has no choice to land. A standard winch launch in New Zealand usually goes somewhere between 1,000 and 3,000 feet above the ground. And starting on the ground, um, the launch point controller, about two minutes before the glider takes off, will put out an aerial call to advise all traffic in the area that a winch launch will be taking place to approximately two to 3,000 feet above the airstrip. When the glider pilot is ready to go, the cable is connected onto the bottom of the glider and then the wings are levelled. The person who's running the wingtip checks that there is no traffic and checks all clear above and behind. The launch point controller then signals to the winch to take up slack. That's where they take the slackness out in the rope until the rope is very tight. And once the rope is very tight, then the signal is given and the glider will go from naught to 60 knots in about one to two seconds and start climbing at about 45 degrees and it will take about one minute to reach two to three thousand feet. There's usually some pretty standardized calls that have taken place. They will give an area 
an area traffic call announcing that there's a winch launch about to take place in two minutes. And the next call you'll hear will be the pilot announcing to the winch, take up slack, take up slack. This instruction tells the winch driver to take up the slack in the cable. The next radio call that you will hear will be all out, all out. This means the launch is taking place, but one thing you need to be careful of is it's quite often that on a winch launch, the cable could break, and that would uh, involve a very low level circuit by the glider, and you need to be able to move out of the way and allow that glider to land. When a powered aircraft joins the circuit and there's a winch launch in progress, that's not a problem at all. Using the overhead rejoin at a glider site that winch launches is not really recommended. Remember there are four types of ways that you can join the circuit. The overhead rejoin, join on downwind, join on base or straight in. The important thing to do is for the powered aircraft to keep an eye on the glider that's taking off. The glider will go from ground level to 2000 feet in about 50 seconds but at any time during that launch the rope could break. Remember conflict avoidance is everyone's responsibility. Powered aircraft should avoid the overhead when a winch launch is announced and about to launch. However, the glider and winch driver should also hold their launch if there's any doubt about joining aircraft or creating conflict. So an aerotow is where the powered aircraft is towing a glider off and is connected with a long rope. Um, the aircraft will be only climbing at about 200 to 400 feet a minute, so it will be about half the rate that it normally climbs. The manoeuvrability of the two gliders is substantially reduced. And then returning back, when the tow plane returns back to land at the airfield, it's got a great big rope hanging out the back, so it has to come across the foundry fence at 200 feet minimum. When taxiing a powered aircraft around on a gliding site, you need to be very cautious about any winch cables which are laying out down the centre of the runway and be very careful not to cross them. And the same with an aerotowing uh, operation. Sometimes there'll be a 50 metre rope hanging off the back of the aircraft, so you need to be careful operating around those. ADSB is a great tool, but most gliders in this country don't have ADSB fitted. I would estimate approximately 20% of the gliders in this country have it, so you're not going to see us. You need to be looking out of the window. If you're going to fly into a gliding site and you're not used to flying into a gliding site, the first thing you need to do is consult your charts and then consult the AIP. The AIP is very good with all the information that you need to know about it, especially if it's a winch site. It'll tell you where the cables are and it'll tell you the height that we're winching to. And if you're not sure about, still not sure about that, then give them a call. 